we'll begin with the history taking in the neonate. What are all the points that we as examiners expect when you all get a neonate as a clinical case? So first, it's the baby details. Name of the baby. Name of the baby essentially means you'll get like baby of. Baby of and the mother's name. Date of birth, time of birth. Along with this comes the gender of the baby, which is important. Informant and reliability. Informant and reliability are important because sometimes what happens is that the mother has been caring for the baby, but however, she'll not be present at the time when you are taking case for the baby. And it'll happen that the mother has either gone for any other obstetric examination or she's unwell. That time, there'll be a bystander or a caregiver, either the grandmother, the aunt, etc., who's giving you the history. Please make sure that the informant, whoever is giving you the history, should be the one who has cared for the baby. Else, please wait for the mother to come so that the mother can give you reliable history. In the exam, if you are asked the reliability of history, it's important that if the informant is the one who has been caring for the baby, the reliability is good. Else, you will tell the reliability as fair or not good. Reliability is not good if the bystander has just that time only come to take care of the baby and has no idea what has happened to the baby in the last 24 to 48 hours. The next thing comes chief complaints. What is exactly the reason? What are the what is or what are the reasons for which the baby has been brought to you? Or if it is just a routine assessment, the chief complaint will be for routine examination of the baby or for essential newborn care. So like that, the chief complaints in case of children who have chief complaints, you will elaborate the chief complaints. In case there is no specific chief complaint, you will say this is for routine neonatal care. The next section in the newborn history is because if there are chief complaints, then you can elaborate with history of presenting illness. But most of the time, the history of presenting illness, like how you take in any other case, will not be valid here because any way a neonate's history will start with the antenatal history. So always in neonatal examination, we begin with the birth history or the antenatal history. In the antenatal history, the first question to be asked is what is the age of the mother and what was the time of conception. So age of the mother at the time of conception is very important. The maternal age at the time of conception, the relevance is in syndromes, especially Down syndrome, wherein the maternal age the more advanced the maternal age, the higher the risk is for Down syndrome. How the pregnancy was confirmed? Now, this is a question commonly asked by all of you in the first trimester. But however, from the pediatric point of view, it is just important to know when the pregnancy was confirmed. Whether the pregnancy was confirmed at 45 days amenorrhea or the pregnancy was confirmed and much later having missed cycle for two or three months. Only that part of the first trimester history is important. Exactly like how you all routinely say pregnancy was detected at two months amenorrhea and diagnosed by urine pregnancy test. This sentence as such is not routinely required. You can say the pregnancy was detected at two months amenorrhea and till then the mother was in doubt whether she was pregnant or not. That's about enough. The next history that is to be taken is history of the first trimester. In the first trimester, what are the questions you'll be asking? You will be first asking the pregnancy was detected at. Now, routinely what all of you say is that the pregnancy was detected at say one and a half months amenorrhea and diagnosed by urine pregnancy test. Typically from pediatrics, this sentence diagnosed by urine pregnancy test is not very relevant. What is more important is when the pregnancy was detected. Was it detected at one and a half months? Was it missed and identified only at four months amenorrhea? This is important to know because you want to know how long was the mother not knowing she is pregnant and still consuming other drugs, has not taken her iron and folic acid or calcium tablets. So that period is important. That is why it's important to know when the pregnancy was detected. How it was detected is not very important to us. Any bleeding per vaginum present? Initially, this kind of bleeding per vaginum which can be present can result in small subchorionic bleeds in the small yolk sac of the fetus. Now all those are important because they are all small small subtle markers for intrauterine infections. So when you have bleeding per vaginum, recurrent abortions, all this is very important in the first trimester. That is why any bleeding per vaginum history is important. The third question to be asked is fever with rash. This is also for intrauterine infection. When I say intrauterine infection, I am implying 
टॉक्सोप्लाज्मा रुबेला साइटोमेगालोवाइरस हर्पी सिंप्लेक्स एंड ऑफकोर्स नाउ इज नॉट दैट रेलिवेंट बट स्टिल डू वी डू सी इट सिफिलिस सो दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट एंड हियर ऑल्सो यू कैन एड एच आई वी टू दिस सो एनी फीवर विथ रैश एसेंशियली इम्प्लाइज दीज सेट ऑफ इन्फेक्शन सो इट्स ऑलवेज इंपॉर्टेंट टू आस्क द मदर वेदर शी हैड फीवर विथ रैश रिमेंबर दिस फीवर विथ रैश वॉट यू आस्क इज नॉट एसेंशियली इंपॉर्टेंट आफ्टर द डिटेक्शन ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी इट यू शुड ऑल्सो आस्क दिस हिस्ट्री just before detection of pregnancy because at the time of detection of pregnancy the fetus is nearly 3 weeks old so that is the time the pregnancy is first detected even in mothers who are detecting the pregnancy earliest hence fever with rash even 3 weeks prior to the time of detection of uh, pregnancy is important so fever with rash is important remember not after detection all the time even just around the time when the pregnancy was detected did she ever have fever with rash i have seen many children many mothers who have had just one day fever and rash about a week or so before di- diagnosis of pregnancy and the child being diagnosed with congenital rubella syndrome it is very traumatic so that is why it's very important to know when the fever with rash happened throughout that same mother i'm talking about was asked about a fever with uh, rash complaints but every time they focused after the detection of pregnancy nobody cared enough to ask what had happened in the one week prior to the diagnosis of pregnancy and that time the fetus is 2 weeks old so that is why it is very important to know the fever with rash history fever with rash in first trimester almost 80 to 85% diagnosis is intrauterine infections mothers can have fever with rash without intrauterine infections but then the baby is essentially normal so fever with rash history with abnormal baby suggestive of intrauterine infections